Hi, Mr. Corsi here. We have a circle question. Let's just work through it. Put all our working at the right hand side of this page. So, part A, part 1. We're asked to find the coordinates of the centre of this circle C1. What do we know about the circle C1? We're told its equation x minus 13 squared plus y plus 4 squared is equal to 100. And the result we'll be using here is that if we have a centre of a circle AB and radius R, its equation is x minus A squared plus y minus b squared equals r squared. So the number we're subtracting from the x gives us the x coordinate and the number we're subtracting from y gives us the y coordinate. So the centre will be 13 and then the number we're subtracting from y is negative 4. y minus negative 4, that gives us our plus 4. So the centre is 13 negative 4. Part 2. We're told that this point, the centre of this circle C1, lies on circle C2. What do we know about circle C2? Well, we're told the equation, and it's this time in the what's called the general form of the equation, x squared plus y squared plus 14x minus 22y plus some constant which we're asked to find. And we do know that since 13 negative 4 lies on C2, then its coordinates, x equals 13 and y equals negative 4, satisfy the equation. All points lying on that circle will satisfy the equation of the circle. That's a basic fact. So we substitute in 13 squared plus negative 4 squared plus 14 times 13 minus 22 times negative 4. Now that can be done in calculator but be very careful about all these negatives. So we've got 13 squared plus, well, negative 4 squared, that's the same as 4 squared, that's 16, uh, plus 14 times 13, and then minus 22 times minus 4, two negatives, positive, that's plus 88. 22 times 4 is 88, so we're adding uh, 88. That all comes to 455. So what we've got is 455 plus C equals 0. Therefore, C is negative 455. So that's part 2. Here's part B. A line joining the centres of the circles intersect at P. So this is the centre of circle C2. This is the centre of circle C1. And they intersect at P. And we have to determine the ratio in which P divides the line joining the centres of the circles. So let's call this A and let's call this B. I'll suppose A and B are the centres of circles C2 and C1 respectively. That just means in that order. Now you'll notice that AB is the radius of C2. AB is radius of C2. PB is the radius 
of C1. And what is the radius of C2? Well, remember we had the equation of C2 being x squared plus y squared plus 14x minus 22y. And we now know that C was negative 455. Now there is a process whereby we can find the radius of a circle from its general form. I'm going to show you a method you, you may not have seen. It's just a procedure that we go through. It doesn't involve f's and g's and so on. You have to make sure that you've got one x squared, one y squared, an x term. If there is none, you put plus zero x. And a y term in that order. And if there's no y term, you put zero y. And then the number at the end and the whole thing make sure it equals zero. So there's two steps to this procedure. The first one actually finds the center of that circle. And to do that, we look at the x coefficient, the number multiplying x, we half it and change the sign. We look at the number multiplying y, that's the y coefficient, we half it and change the sign. And once we have that center, the radius is easily calculated. It turns out to be the square root of this square plus this squared minus this number at the end. So it's negative 7 squared plus 11 squared minus the number at the end, minus negative 4, 5, 5. So in this case we've got square root of 49 plus 121 plus 4, 5, 5. And again, calculator would be useful for this. So 49 plus 121 plus 4, 5, 5. And that number, 6, 2, 5. We find the square root of that number. And that turns out to be 25. So the radius of that large circle C2 is 25. PB is the radius of C1. Do we know the radius of C1? Well, there's the equation of C1. It's x minus 13 squared plus y plus 4 squared equals 100. Now, we know from this little formula up here that the number at the end, the 100, is the radius squared. So the radius is equal to 10. So what is it that we know now? We know in this diagram that the whole line AB that's the large radius, is 25 units. And we know that PB, from there to there, that's a small radius, the radius of C1, that's 10 units. So we can work out that this section of the line must be 15. So what's the ratio that P divides AB in? P divides AB in the ratio 15 to 10. can simplify that ratio by dividing by 5. So it's 3 to 2. So P divides AB in the ratio 3 to 2. So that's B part 1 completed. We have the ratio 3 to 2. B, P divides AB. Let's move on to part 2 of B. Hence or otherwise determine the coordinates of 
P. This is B part two. So we now know that three bits for this part, two bits for this part, that's P, that's A, which is the centre of circle C2, there it is, and we've worked out that that was negative 7, 11. B, the centre of C1, we already knew that that was 13, negative 4. So we have to get some sort of relationship working in this diagram. We could, there's several ways of doing it, but we could say that, for instance, if we journeyed from A to P, that would be 3 out of 5 compared to AB, 3 fifths of the whole journey. I mean, we could say PB was two-fifths of AB. All sorts of different ways of writing it. Let's get rid of the fraction there. Five times the journey from A to P would be three times journey A to B. Now, that's multiplying both sides by five. Using position vectors now, A to P would be position vector of P minus position vector of A, three times a to B, position vector of B minus position vector of A. Now, we're trying to find the position vector of P because the components of that will be the same as the coordinates of the point P. So we're trying to solve this equation now for P. So let's get rid of the brackets. 5P minus 5A equals 3B minus 3A. Now, we'll just leave 5p on its own just now. We can divide by 5 later. Add 5a to both sides. We'll get 3b. And then 5a added to negative 3a is 2b, 2a. So we get 5p is 3b plus 2a. Now, we know the position vector of b. It's 13, negative 4. We know the position vector of A. It's negative 7, 11. So what does that all come to? 3 13 is 39 minus 14. That's 25. And 3 lots of negative 4, that's negative 12, plus 22, that's 10. So 5 times the position vector of P gives us this. So the position vector of P would be a fifth of this. We divide both the components by 5. So that would be 5, 2. And if that's what we do to get from the origin to the point P, that's what the position vector is, then the coordinates of point P will be 5, 2. So that's point five two. So finally, let's move on to the last part of the question. And here it is. And we're asked in this we're told in this this case that this point P is the center of a third circle, and we're told that the circle C two touches that third circle internally. Now the way this can work is the third circle you can see how that's appearing there where this is the center C2 is touching this much larger circle. There's the radius of that circle and it goes goes round like that. 
So we're asked to find the equation of this red circle C3. There's its radius. Now it's connected to the diameter of C2. That's this whole line down to P. That's the diameter of C2. And we have to subtract the radius of C1. Let's see if we can put that in the diameter of C2. Now remember, the radius of C2 was 25. So that'll be a 25 plus a 25. OK. That's 50 for the diameter. Minus this little radius. That's the radius of C1. And the radius of C1 is 10. So there's a 10 there. And we would subtract 10 from this 50 to get 40 for the radius of the red circle. So this is part C, where we have this large circle C3, whose centre we know is the point P, which we found earlier, and that has... Uh, coordinates 5, 2. The radius of this circle we've calculated to be 50. That's the diameter of C2 minus 10, which is the radius of C1. So centre is 5, 2. Radius is 40. So the equation of C3 is, and again we go back up to this form of the equation, x minus 5 squared plus y minus 2 squared equals 40 squared, which is 1,600. That's the equation of C3. So that's Mr. Corsi signing out and thanks for watching this video.